dear students today we will start a new flow problem which is again between the two plates plates are horizontal but the difference between the previous article and this article is that in this case your plates are porous so now we will discuss flow between two parallel porous plates so we will try to find the exact solution of this situation as far as the physical model is concerned in physical model your fluid is same as we discussed in the previous article that means it is incompressible it is of constant density it is of vis constant viscosity uh, as far as plates are concerned the plates are also having some similarities between the previous article and this article the only difference between the uh, the only difference for the plates is that in this case both the plates are porous that simply means that if these are the two plates then from one plate there is suction and from another plate there is injection so from one plate the fluid is entering into the flow region while from the another plate it is going out from the flow region otherwise both the plates are rigid as the in the previous case these are rigid but still there are pores in these plates the plates are infinite in length secondly the plates are uh, smooth so that roughness effects are not to be considered plates are infinite so end effects are not to be considered and since the depth of the plate or you can say the depth of the fluid is very small then the uh, extension of the fluid in x direction and therefore the fluid may be considered to be two dimensional it is applicable because the depth as well as the width width of the plate is also very small compared to the length therefore it may be considered to be two dimensional flow density of the fluid is rho which is constant viscosity is mu now if the flow we talk about the flow then again the assumptions are same that is your flow is steady your flow is laminar and the velocity distribution will be different in this case because we assume that fluid is entering as well as exiting with the same constant velocity v not so in this case our q will be different q means the velocity this will be u y as such because your velocity variations are in this direction so u is a function of y and second component of velocity that means v not because with v not the fluid is entering and with the same velocity it is exiting from the flow region and third component we will write here otherwise we have taken it to be two dimensional flow so w will be practically zero and delta delta z is zero so as far as the physical model is concerned you have to write all assumptions which have been taken in the article flow between two parallel non porous plates okay now we come to equation of continuity again in this in this case equation of continuity you see that for two dimensional flow if i write it it is delta u delta x delta v delta y even if i write delta w delta z then is equal to zero this should be zero <coughs> to uh, permit the flow so you see that u is not a function of x v is v not but it is constant and w is zero so it is satisfied is satisfied therefore flow is possible so this is one condition now i write equation of motion so i am writing it for x direction equation of motion for x direction i am writing the full form of navier stokes equation for the viscous fluid with constant viscosity which says rho delta u delta t rho u delta u delta x plus rho v delta u delta y 
rho w delta u delta z is minus delta p delta x plus mu delta 2u delta x2 delta 2u delta y2 and delta 2u delta z2 you don't be confused if i am writing this one or this one because these will automatically be zero now here your flow is a study so this will be cancelled and uh, here u is not a function of x so this will be cancelled v yes we have v naught delta u delta y yes u is a function of y again it is rho w but w is zero now delta p delta x plus mu here delta 2 u x 2 u is not a function of x but u is a function of y so i'll write delta 2 u delta y 2 this is the first equation and uh, if i differentiate it with respect to x suppose i differentiate it with respect to x because i want to find what is the value of this differentiating with respect to x it will be rho v naught both are constant u is not a function of x so it will be zero and this will be minus delta 2p delta x2 again u is not a function of x so i just get delta 2p delta x2 is zero which implies delta p delta x is equal to constant or dp dx i'll tell you later that why i am writing dp dx or p is a single variable function dp dx is constant and let us assume it as minus p or p so this is on your choice you can take minus p you can take p your results will be changed according to this assumption so in this case we will assume that dp dx is equal to minus p just to show you that there is no difference in taking minus p or plus p okay so this is one value which we got for dp dx now i have written dp dx the reason being that when i write equation of motion for y direction you will have rho delta v delta t that will be zero you will have rho u delta v delta x v is not a function of x so it will be zero v is not a function of y it will be zero v is not a function of z so it will be zero now you will get minus delta p delta y uh, I am explaining this with the help of this equation. This equation. In place of delta p delta x, you will have delta p delta y plus mu. But again, in place of u, you will have v and v is constant. Therefore, these all three will be 0. So, you are just left with minus delta p delta y is equal to 0. Which shows that p is not a function of y. So simply your p is a function of x and that is why I have replaced this partial derivative with respect to this uh, with this total derivative. Okay. So now we get this equation, this one, first equation. So we will proceed by taking this first equation to find the velocity distribution. So I get mu d2u dy2, I am writing this as d2u, d uh, total derivative because again u is a single variable function delta v naught du dy and here i have the delta p delta x so i will assume it to be okay 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 let us take it to be just a minute mm, we assume this dp dx we assume is this of the same nature you may assume it to be minus p you may assume it to be p so i am taking it p dp dx is p so it is written as p solve it just by the simple methods minus rho v naught upon u oh this is not u this is rho this is mu this is mu mu then du dy plus p upon mu this is a second order differential equation you assume du dy is f and write replace it 
डी एफ डी वाई माइनस रो वी नॉट म्यू देन एफ प्लस पी अपॉन म्यू इज जीरो दिस इज अ फर्स्ट ऑर्डर डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन यू एज्यूम द इंटीग्रेटिंग फैक्टर यू सॉल्व इट एंड देन फाइनली आई एम राइटिंग वट एवर यू विल गेट फॉर द वेलासिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू विल गेट इट फॉर एफ एंड देन यू रिप्लेस एफ बाई डी यू डी वाई अगेन सॉल्व इट एंड यू विल गेट योर यू यू कैन डू दीज कैलकुलेशन योर सेल्फ वेरी ईजीली जस्ट मीन दिस नॉट नॉट दिस इज रो वी नॉट वाई प्लस ए इरेज टू दी पावर रो वी नॉट वाई अपॉन म्यू इन टू म्यू अपॉन रो वी नॉट प्लस बी दिस विल बी द सोल्यूशन फाइनल सोल्यूशन ऑफ दिस इक्वेशन एंड दिस इज द वेलासिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन द प्रीवियस पेज वी वर अप टू टू So, ticket three. Now, as in the previous case, we have taken the three types of flows. Here also, we will discuss the three flows. But in this case, the most generalized type of flow, that is generalized plane quadratic flow, will be discussed uh, at first number. So, case one, as case one, we are discussing. generalized plane quadratic flow now what were the conditions for generalized plane quadratic flow the boundary conditions were that u is 0 at y 0 uh, i have not uh, written the position of plates This is for y is equal to zero, and this is for y is equal to h. So these are the positions of the plates. Then u is equal to capital U at y is equal to h. Secondly. the dp dx that means the velocity uh, gradient of velocity is not equal to 0 so because in generalized plane quadratic flow one plate is at rest so this plate is at rest and another plate is moving it is not necessary that you take the lower plate to be at rest and upper plate to be moving you may change the case your low, lower plate may be at rest Uh, may be moving and your upper plate may be at rest so it is on your choice or on the choice of the physical situation so these are the assumptions or the boundary conditions for this case and as we obtain our u our u was u is equal to p upon rho v not y plus a e raised to the power rho v not y upon mu mu upon rho v not plus b in this equation you will use these boundary conditions you will put u is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 so y is equal to 0 that means a um for the first condition you will get a mu upon rho v not plus b is equal to 0 and for the second condition that means for this condition capital u is equal to p upon rho v not in place of y i'll put h plus a e raised to the power rho v not h upon mu into mu upon rho v not plus b now you have two equations in two unknowns solve these equations for a and b and then you will find that you will get a as a is equal to u minus p h square upon mu r e r e upon h divided by 
e raised to the power r e minus 1. e raised to the power r e minus 1 and you will get your b as minus u minus ph square upon mu r e upon e raised to the power r e minus 1. Now what is this r e? r e is the Reynolds number which is rho v naught h upon mu as per the definition of Reynolds number because it is the ratio of inertia force to viscous force. So when you solve these two equations for a and b you make this substitution r e for rho v naught h upon mu and you will get your values of a and b you just put the values of a and b and get your velocity distribution which i am writing over here yes finally you get u is equal to p eta h square upon r e mu plus e raised to the power r e eta minus 1 upon e raised to the power r e minus 1 uh, and then u this is u minus p h square upon mu r e this will be the solution for u now this is number 9 Now we come to the cases that was the first case now we come to case 2 because this case 2 may be derived from case uh, first in case 2 we take if I take p is equal to 0 if I take p is equal to 0 we I come to the case plane quite a flow if p is 0 u is 0 at z0 sorry this is y0 in your case i have taken plates to be at y just a minute i should check it okay it is okay and then u is equal to capital u at y is equal to h so in this case one plate is moving one plate is at rest and uh, uh, fluid flow in the fluid flow there are uh, there is no pressure gradient so pressure is taken to be as constant so this is the case of plane quite a flow because these are the conditions for plane quite a flow so i if i substitute p is equal to zero because these two conditions have already been used in case one so if i put p is equal to zero in nine i'll get velocity distribution for huh, yes here eta is equal to y upon h so eta is again a non-dimensional parameter because y has the dimension of length, h has the dimension of length, so it is a non-dimensional parameter. So what are limits are, whatever limits are given for y will be converted for eta. That simply means that this implies, y is equal to 0 implies when eta is equal to 0. Because if you put y is equal to 0, this implies eta is equal to 0. And if you put y is equal to h, it implies eta is equal to 1. So whatever conditions are here for y will be converted for n eta. And this implies when eta is equal to 1. So these are the boundary conditions after non-dimensionalizing certain uh, values. In this case, in porous plate case, you have not to discuss the maximum velocity or the average velocity for case 1. You have to discuss these uh, for case 2 only. So for case 2, Again for case 2, uh, 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 you may get u maximum, you calculate it yourself, then I am taking u average because it will be used in some other properties. So u average will be what we write u, we write u dy. So u dy, if I write u dy and it is uh, 0 to h and here I take 1 upon h now in your case y is replaced by eta h 
सो वॉट इज डी वाई डी वाई इज इक्वल टू एच डी ईटा एंड दिस जीरो फॉर ईटा विल बी जीरो दिस एच फॉर वाई विल बी वन फॉर ईटा सो वॉट यू एवरेज बिकम्स यू एवरेज इज इक्वल टू इन प्लेस ऑफ टी वाई यू विल राइट ईटा डी एच डी ईटा एच विल बी कैंसल विद दिस एच एंड यू आर जस्ट लैप विद जीरो टू वन यू डी ईटा ओके नाउ यू कैन पुट द वैल्यू ऑफ यू फ्रॉम फ्रॉम दिस न्यू यू इन दिस केस योर यू विल बी कन्वर्टेड टू दिस विल बी जीरो दिस विल बी जीरो यू आर लेफ्ट विद यू ई रेज टू द पावर आर ई ईटा माइनस वन अपॉन ई रेज टू द पावर आर ई माइनस वन and what is your parameter here variable parameter eta we don't think that we don't have y in this expression actually y is replaced by eta so variable is eta so when you find u maximum you have to differentiate it with respect to eta and then you have to put it zero you have to find the point and then put that point to get u maximum similarly for u average now you are with 0 to 1 u d eta you put the value of u capital u e raised to the power r e eta minus 1 upon e raised to the power r e minus 1 so here u is constant e raised to the power r e minus 1 is constant and this is d eta 0 to 1 e raised to the power r e eta minus 1 d eta and it will be u upon e raised to the power r e minus 1 and then 1 upon r e e raised to the power r e eta minus eta for 0 to 1 and after putting these limits you are left with u e raised to the power r e minus mm either you take re to be lcm so you will get re minus this will be raised to the power re 1 upon re yes 1 so this is the final value this is the final value of velocity distribution and here it will be e raised to the power re minus 1 so this is your velocity distribution uh, for u average so i am a this 10 and this is 11 now with the help of this u average you may calculate some more things now we will find what is sigma xy sigma xy is mu this is shearing stress du dy so it will be mu du d eta because it is in terms of eta and then d eta d y so put the values it is mu u e raised to the power r e eta minus mm, d u d y so it will be r e upon e raised to the power r e minus 1 and then d eta d y is 1 upon h now you can very well find the skin frictions skin friction means sigma x y at y is equal to 0 so it is a skin friction at the lower plate so now in this case y is equal to 0 will be replaced by eta is equal to 0 so if i put eta is equal to 0 here i get mu u r e upon h e r e minus 1 so this is one another value now i may get skin friction at y is equal to h that simply means sigma x y at eta is equal to 1 and now you put eta is equal to 1 and get its value this is mu u r e e raised to the power r e upon h e r e minus 1 you know that exponential function lies between 
1 and 2. So you can say you can compare these two values that skin friction at the uh, at the above plate is more than the skin friction at the lower plate. So this is about skin friction. Now you can calculate the coefficient of screen friction. So for that coefficient of screen friction that means you need sigma x y at y is equal to 0 for the above plate upon half rho u average square. Now I think you can calculate it you know what is u average you know what is sigma x y at y is equal to 0 given by 13 and then you can get its value this will be twice v naught r e square e raised to the power r e minus 1 upon e raised to the power r e minus r e minus 1 square u. So this will be your coefficient of skin friction at the lower wall and similarly coefficient of skin friction at the above wall that means y is equal to h. It is understood that you will change this y into eta. So I may also write here eta is equal to 0 and eta is equal to 1. So either you take this or eta is equal to 1 and eta is equal to 0. So when you get its value this will be twice v naught e raised to the power r e again r e square e raised to the power r e minus 1 e raised to the power r e minus r e minus 1 square u. Again these are comparable. Now you can similarly get what is u q in terms of u a. We write u a into h but it is for y variable. So for eta variable it will be u a 1 because in this case h is replaced by 1. So u average and flux of fluid both are same. So this is all about this when you are considering the plane quality flow. Now similarly we will take case 3 and I am just telling you the velocity distribution for case 3 all other properties will be calculated by you yourself. In case 3 we will consider plane Poisley flow. P O I S U I L L E plane Poisley flow. In plane Poisley flow, what we take P not 0, number 2 velocity at the lower plate 0, at eta is 0 or you say y 0 and velocity at the above plate is constant at eta is equal to 1. So under these conditions, we again find what is our u and then u will be u is equal to P eta h square upon r e no 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 this is not plain Poisley flow in plain Poisley flow both the plates are at rest so both the plates are at rest because if I take one plate moving it will become generalized plane quality flow both the plates are at rest and the flow motion is due to this gradient of pressure so e raised to the power r e eta minus 1 e raised to the power r e minus 1 minus p h square upon mu r e. So this is u. Now you can very well calculate u average then uh, u maximum by the same procedure as we calculated in the previous articles sigma x y then sigma x y at eta 0 and eta 1 then coefficient of friction and q flux. So now you calculate all these things yourself and if you have any problem you just write me to get these expressions. So this is all about this for flow between two parallel plates when your plates are porous. You may get to solve certain questions, certain experiments or examples to use the plane, uh, to use this parallel flow between 
plates where the plates are porous so what you have to do just you have your velocity distribution if they are asking for the velocity distribution you just solve get the velocity distribution and put the parameters given in your example as I solved for the plane um, parallel flow for non porous plate similarly you may get certain questions in which you will have the values of parameters like pressure like distance between the plates you may very well or the velocity distribution or viscosity you may find your Rayleigh num Reynolds number you put all the parameters in your velocity distribution and then simply you can get u average u maximum sigma x y or coefficient of fraction or whatever is asked in the question so you just do certain examples based on this flow so this is all about the second type of flow which is the flow between two parallel plates when your plates are porous so in the next lecture we will discuss one another type of flow thank you so much